Obviously, we all know by now RFK Jr. went on the Breaking Points podcast to talk with Crystal and Sager about a number of issues, and about 10 minutes before they apparently had to wrap for some reason, uh, Crystal decided to broach the issue of medicine and vaccines uh, to RFK Jr., tried to challenge him on this issue without actually challenging him because when he tried to defend his position, she sort of expressed she wasn't exactly interested in hearing it. So it was a very, very strange line of inquiry, to put it kindly, at the end of this. I know a lot of people watching right now and people who are watching on YouTube once we clip this segment tomorrow have already seen this video, so we are not going to play the whole thing. We're going to be merciful and play the first few minutes just to give everybody an idea of how this went down. Stop a little bit along the way. Let's give it a go. Let me ask you about vaccines. This is an area where you and I have um, significant differences. And, you know, just to level with you on this, like a lot of what you say, I really respond to. I think you're a very genuine person. But the across the board, um, whether you want to call it vaccine skepticism or anti-vax advocacy, which has been a central part of what you've been up to for the past number of years, for me personally, it's a it's an issue and it's a it's a real sort of red line. And I know I'm not alone in that, especially running in a Democratic primary. There are going to be other millions of people like me who have similar concerns. So how how do you win them over? What's your message to people who think like I do? Well, but just tell me, um, tell me where you think I got it wrong. Well, I think you get it wrong when you draw a uh, correlation between the rise of things like autism and the introduction of vaccines when there isn't hard scientific evidence tying those things together. How do you I, know? Let, let me ask you this. How do you know there's not a hard scientific evidence? Well, because the one major study that purported to show that was retracted and the scientist who conducted it was, um, you know, had to was now, what you're doing now, basically Crystal. fraudulently created. Listen, uh, I don't, no, no, no. The, hold on, hold on. You're, you're but I don't, I don't want to get I don't want to get in a debate with you about this because you've spent your. OK, so OK, so that's where this goes sideways, because if you're interviewing a guest, you cannot simply steer the conversation exactly the way you want it to go. She starts out by asking him a political question. How are you going to reconcile your stances on vaccines with the fact that you're running in a Democratic primary where most people disagree with you on that? His answer has something to do with, well, I'm going to try and convince people that I am correct about this. Now, I am not taking uh, a position right. right now whether he is correct or not, but I'm saying that's what he's coming back with. Well, the way I'm going to handle this is I'm going to do politics the old-fashioned way, which is I'm going to try to convince the electorate that I'm right. This is partly why he needs to be running as an independent, because good luck convincing the politics girl audience that you're right about this, right? You have no fucking chance at all, which is why your candidacy right. makes no sense inside the Democratic Party. But that'll be in our next segment. For now, it's clear that he took this as an invitation to defend his position on the issue. And then she makes clear that she's not interested in debating his actual position on the issue. She's interested in the horse race element of this. So what she's asking him is not to defend his point of view. What she's really asking him is how much will you betray your actual position on this issue in order to sort of uh, assuage the anxieties of the Democratic primary voter base so that they don't turn on you over this issue of vaccines. But he was not interested in going there. He wanted to defend his point of view. And when the guest who is a candidate for office, who is there to defend their points of view, tries to do that, you cannot then shut them down and say, well, no, no, I don't want to debate. She started this by saying, this is a red line for me. And it's a red line for a lot of Democratic voters. So then he says, OK, well, if this is a red line, let's engage and let me try to convince you I'm correct. And she's like, well, no, 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 we can't do that. That's just the chicken shit way to go about this segment, especially since you knew that this portion of the interview was going to be the most controversial. You knew this was going to be the piece that everybody's eyes were going to be on. And so to wait until you have limited time, first of all, that's a red flag. But then second, to try and cut him off and try and steer the conversation the way you, the pundit, want the conversation to go, as opposed to where the candidate wants to take it in order to advance his aims of getting people to vote for him, getting people to see it his way. That's just an illegitimate way to conduct the interview. You cannot do that. Well, this is his signature issue. Right. So so if you're going to litigate it, 
litigate it. Now, right. my my read on this, um, you know, we discussed this earlier, and I think we we agree about this. Crystal never should have done this interview. You, Marianne just officiated at your wedding. You well, have exactly. no you have no credibility in this area. You should have gotten the B team. You should have gotten Ryan and Emily and even Ryan's compromised with that TikTok article. You should have gotten maybe Sagar and Emily. Right, right. And that would have been fine. Like you're to walk around as if you still have credibility as a journalist on this topic is. And I know with a lot of people, she has no credibility on any topic. But on this topic in particular, literally Marianne just officiated your wedding. Less than two fucking weeks ago. Less than two weeks ago. So how are you walking around like, oh no, I can interview RFK and it's going to be fine. Now, <laughs> now that now that having been said, I don't think she was trying to ambush him here. I think she does want to maintain the appearance of propriety, and that's why she wanted to frame it in terms of the politics. I think what she was thinking here is that way. We won't get into a debate right? where I'm going to have to push back on what he believes. We'll just keep it on the horse race. Right. That's she, what she wanted. But he immediately came back with, well, what don't you agree with about it? Which does demand that she answer that. But as you point out, that's where she goes wrong. Okay, so you answer it. Well, now you have to let him answer that because now you're in it. You right, might now not have it. wanted to talk about it, but now you're talking about it. And you should have seen that coming when you're asking a guy who's really staked his reputation, whatever you think about his views, he's really staked his reputation on this position. Like, did you not think he was going to defend it if you brought that up? Right. He's not interested in horse race. He's not a pundit. He's a candidate. He has right. a stake in convincing right. people that he is correct. And so once he goes there, Sorry, you got to go with it. Life pulling out this study. Now, I will tell you. I, I tell let you, me just tell hundreds you. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Let me just tell you. I'm not I've listened to hours of interviews with you with an, yeah. an open mind, and I'm not persuaded. Now, maybe I'm wrong. That's possible. I'll okay, listen. So she says, listen, I've listened to you make your case. I'm not convinced. So what does this suggest? What this suggests is that the goal of this segment is not for crystal ball to debate rfk on this issue it's for crystal ball her goal is to communicate to her audience that she crystal ball disagrees with rfk on this issue and that right. this issue is a right. red line for her right. signaling to the right. audience we can't go there right we cannot go there and she's not giving him a chance to defend the merits of his point of view that's a terrible look for any interviewer it's an especially terrible look when as russell just said RFK Jr.'s opponent just officiated your wedding less than two right. weeks ago. You should not even be sitting there. You should right. not even be in this interview. In indeed. Out there, people can watch. I thought Megyn Kelly did a phenomenal interview with you that went through all these claims piece by piece by piece. I really encourage people to watch that whole exchange because we won't be able to do it justice here in the five minutes we have left. Okay, well, so why did you save this for when you only have five minutes left? First of all, why do you only have five minutes left? You're on YouTube. There's no show coming in after you. What, do you got to go drop Kyle off at the hair salon, make sure they get the color right? Is that why you got to only have five minutes left? What do you mean I, you only I, got five I, minutes? Hang on. Is, isn't that him? Isn't that him? Didn't she say at some point that I know you have to go or something? I don't know, but he's clearly willing to engage, right? Well, sure. I mean, sure. guests a lot of times I, I, tell I, I, you. I'm, I'm, I'm Listen, just, this is a very I, common thing with guests. They a lot of times tell you they have limited time, and then once they get going, they'll stick around for two hours if you need them to. They just say they, they have limited time so that you don't keep them there all day, right? But a lot of times, true, like he's true. clearly willing to engage on this if she wants to engage on this. Hey, hey, people in the chat, let me know. Am I making that up? I could swear that he something like that was said. That he it's out there know. that, but, yes, but I, yeah, I have heard right, that he right. imposed the time limit, that he imposed the time, which is all fine. But if he imposed the time limit, let him end it. Then man he, man he, manage the time. Yeah. Or let him say, I'm out of time. I got to go. He's right, clearly right, ready to right, go on about right, this for as right. long as he has to. Right? right. I mean, he's he's not running out the door. 
He's saying, all right, let me defend my position. She's like, well, no, I mean, look, we're out of time and people can check out the Megyn Kelly interview. And, you know, I don't want to get into this now. I just wanted to express to my audience that I disagree with you on this without really giving you a chance to persuade them why uh, they shouldn't disagree with you on this. Right. Once again, this got nothing to do with whether I agree personally with RFK's stances on these things. We just got done reading Norman Finkelstein's book the last couple of weeks. His is next on the list. I will read that one. Um, but that's not what this is about. This is about you're giving a guy a platform to come and make his case, and then you're being very sneaky about uh, the fact that you're not actually letting him make his argument. Let's keep right. going. Right. But there are going to be people like me who aren't persuaded and who see this as an issue. And the fact that it's been such a central part of your advocacy means I can't just sort of put it to the side and say, oh, well, I'll just ignore you know, this piece that's been really important to you in your life. So you're running in a Democratic primary. You have a lot of people who feel even more strongly than me who think that you know Dr. Fauci is a hero and all of these things. How are you going to persuade them? How are you going to reach them? And what is your message to them? Well, uh, first of all, I'm not leading with, you know, my opinions about vaccines. But what I say to people is show me where I got it wrong. Show me the, where I got my science wrong. I've written books about this. I, you know, I wrote a book about a link between thimerosal and autism that has, I think, 450 si- distilled scientific studies that confirm and validate that hypothesis and 1400 references and if i got something wrong show me where it is but i think people uh, have shown you where things are no, wrong no, 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 but you don't want to hear no. it is because i've seen you know numerous fact checks dr vinay prasad who we you know really respect on uh, the covid vaccine he went through your interview with all in he did a fact check i mean it's not and, and I, so the fact check I mean, so of okay so what this what this begs the question is what crystal would you like him to say like what would you actually like what could he say here that would satisfy you because first you said, what are you going to how are you going to deal with the fact that a lot of Democrats are not with you on this? His answer is basically, I'm right about this and I'm going to convince people. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But then she comes back and she says, well, look, there are a lot of Democrats who feel very strongly about this. What's your answer to them? But he just tried to give you what his answer was and you wouldn't let him. You say, we're not going to get bogged down in this now. So what what could he say at this point? that would make you happy. Like you're not really giving him a chance to answer to your satisfaction. That's why this plays as a hit job. It plays as a smear piece for that reason. Right, right. Um, Yeah, she she had no business doing this interview because maybe it wouldn't play this way if you weren't buddies with Marianne and she didn't just do your wedding. Right. I mean, yeah, people would still get mad about it, but it wouldn't scream bias the way that it does. Right. Exactly. But but you you, really it shows a terrible lack of judgment that you even thought it was appropriate for you to interview him. Right. Exactly. And look, this is all we have here. Obviously, like I said, I told you guys I would keep that mercifully short. You guys have all seen the full 10 minutes. Right. Um, She goes on to ask him a question, which on its own is a fair question where she says, look, Trump did Operation Warp Speed. If there's a pandemic under your watch as president, how will you act? I think that's a totally fair question. Okay, given your advocacy on these issues, um, what does a pandemic response under President RFK look like? That in itself is a fair question. The problem is by the time you got to that, you're already five minutes in where you've already cut the guy off twice and communicated very very clearly that you're not really interested in his position so at that point you start asking him okay what would you do he answered that i thought fairly well and she didn't really take much issue with that but by that point you've already slammed quite a few doors in his face is okay where are you going to let me go with this and that's why it just played as sort of a drive-by piece well and also i mean she's done a lot (laughs) of interviews with uh marianne williamson um has she ever asked her about the uh reporting on her abusing her staff and having a long history of abusing the people around her and showing signs of serious mental instability according to people who have spent time with her and worked in organizations that she's been involved in has she ever asked her about things that she's written in her books Or what about Marianne Williamson's record on questions pertaining to, uh, shall we say, science, right? 
Yeah. Because there was an article we got tipped off to before we went on the air that deals with this a little bit. So, Russell, do you uh, want to share uh, that? All right. So th this is a fun one. And uh, Mika, if you're still out there, we owe this one to you because I saw it in the chat and I had never heard about it. Uh, she mentioned Marianne's views on uh, weight loss. You have that? You have it what on do you mean, screen? do I have that? Yeah, I got no, it. No, you have Okay, yeah, so... Saying, yeah. All right. So, what do you mean? Do I got it? Do you got it? I mean, you got it on the screen. Is it I mean, worth you see it? it. Yeah. I'm, I'm over here now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Marianne Williamson wrote a weight loss book in 2010, and it recommends sage cleansing your kitchen and praying yourself thin. All right. Now, this so, seems kind of anti science to me. I don't know. It this seems is a, red a little line I, me. I don't remember her ever asking her about this. Okay. So. The core principle. I've been using rosemary on my kitchen this whole time. That's why I am where I am. Sage, I, not rosemary. I, I've been using oregano. That's why I'm <laughs> fucking fat. <laughs> <laughs> the core principle of Williamson's book is surrendering your weight forever by deferring to a higher power. Williamson's approach has some similarities to 12 step programs like Alcoholics Anonymous and Overeaters Anonymous the latter of which offers physical, emotional, and spiritual recovery for those suffering from compulsive eating. There is, so, there is some evidence that an inability to lose weight or a compulsion to overeat is similar to addiction, but it's controversial in the medical community. The book suggests that the natural state of the body is fat-free. Well, that would go over really well with your current base of Democratic voters. Williamson doesn't dictate what readers should and shouldn't eat, but she does compare a hot fudge sundae to crystal meth. You know, I've, I've never had a hot fudge sundae and had the overwhelming urge to take apart my computer and put it back together. Um, Williamson believes you subconsciously make your body a large size to contain your large problems. Williamson repeatedly refers to weight gain and anything that causes it as abuse to your own body. She also presents her theory that many people, implicitly women, gain weight in response to sexual trauma because they want to hide behind a wall of weight. Williamson suggests readers write a letter to themselves beginning, Dear Fat Ass. <laughs> okay. Williamson, I'll get on that tomorrow. I put on some weight during the winter. Uh, Williamson also demands that you undress in front of a mirror. Take a good look at yourself. There you will see the scars of war as proof that you need to lose weight for spiritual and health reasons. Williamson approves of putting a picture or of a supermodel, but with your face on the model's body on your fridge as inspiration. Quote, it's not a false value, a superficial or shallow image created by fashion magazines just to taunt you. You're simply allowing your heart to own what it really wants. Williamson recommends sage cleansing your kitchen to launch your weight loss journey. So, uh, I, I, you know, I've never once seen Crystal mention that, question her about that or any of the other various batshit crazy unscientific things that Marianne has said over the years. So yeah, and uh, look, Crystal Ball, Kyle Kolinsky, everybody in this space, the whole premise of independent media, right? The the whole raison d'etre for us to be here, right? The whole reason we are where we are doing what we do is because we have observed over the years the sort of corrupt and incestuous relationship between mainstream media and the political establishment right uh joe scarborough and mika brzezinski they run a joggers club in washington dc right they get yep. together the yep. reporters some of the politicians some of the consultants the lobbyists they get together they go on a nice jog every morning right and then they go on the air and they parrot certain talking points not consciously prostituting themselves in their minds hey this is just the way it works right right Right. They have their job. We have our job, right? It's not a conscious thing, but that bias obviously exists, and to an outside observer, it's completely obvious. So how on earth can Crystal Ball, someone who has a career now because she was able to observe that trend, right? And in fact, she came from yeah. that world at first, so she's very conscious of that. How can you have 
a candidate for president officiate your wedding ceremony and then whatever it is 10 days later come and interview her opponents and then at the end just sort of broach the most controversial issue of the episode and not allow him a chance to actually engage in a debate over the merits of that issue. How could you think that's not going to look horrible? This is why, by the way, we and our friends at RBN and Hardlands Media, this is why we made a big deal about the wedding and the fact that Marianne right. was out the way. It wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't that people went to a wedding. It wasn't that people went to a wedding. It's that isn't the fact that Marianne was there officiating and that they all got together and yucked it up and took pictures and had a great time, isn't that going to prove itself a conflict of interest at some point? And it didn't even take two weeks. It didn't right. even take two weeks for that to happen. So that's why we made an issue of it. Please clap.